Okay, so, so we'll talk about uh, the uh, uh, what's making the headlines right now. But again, what is also in uh, was the headlines. The Global Happiness Report was released uh, early yesterday, uh, and of course, Nigeria was ranked much better. We now ranked 85 among uh, more than 100 countries uh, ranked around the world. So our ranking is better in terms of being one of the world's happiest uh, countries. But again, we have a lot to do on the economy side and. Why don't we keep that uh, report in our uh, back pocket, as it were. Uh, let's uh, take you through what some of the stories making the headlines. The Federal Inland Revenue Service uh, says there's no plan to increase the uh, to increase VAT, VAT, value-added tax, what you call consumption tax, which you pay on everything you consume, including recharge cards, soft drinks, alcohol, non-alcoholic beverages, bread, everything. Uh, from 5% to 7.25%, according to a, a, a raft of, of tweets uh, uh, published uh, a couple of hours ago by the Federal Inland Revenue Service, says the agency has no plan to uh, increase uh, VAT, but, but plans to increase the volume of VAT collected, which was 1.1 trillion naira last year. And the agency says the there's been a steady increase, 25% increase over the last three years in the total collectible VAT. Uh, so that's been now uh, late to rest. The agency says there was no, uh, said that there was no such plan or no such comment made uh, before the National Assembly by the head of the uh, agency, the FRS. Meantime, the FRS says uh, there's uh, a very high incidences of, of collected uh, VAT, but not remitted to the government by companies. Uh, and that's where one of the uh, four areas which the agency highlighted that a number of companies collect VAT, but do not remit them to the government. So that is one a key problem uh, the FRS is, uh, is handling. Uh, the agency also uh, clarifies that uh, it's in talks with the Ministry of Finance uh, to see how uh, what are called uh, co corporate tax, or the company's income tax, or CIT, could be reduced from 30% to 20% for small businesses uh, to stimulate uh, companies within that space. Meantime, uh, Airtel is joining uh, the uh, club of telcos, big telecommunication companies, uh, looking to list on the stock exchange. Uh, media reports that the uh, telco giant is looking to, uh, is open, may have opened talks with the SEC and the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Uh, for a possible listing by introduction in the first half of 2019. First half of this year will end on June the 30th. So let's talk about uh, fixing our transfer tax, uh, pricing tax, which is one uh, tax relating to multinationals. Uh, Anderson Tax Nigeria says there's a need for the government to enforce the new rules uh, around multinationals. Uh, but what are some of the issues that have to be dealt with when we're looking at transfer pricing, tax regime, which is now uh, a global thing, of course, a number of companies standing on, on that, not just here, but around the continent. Uh, let's take a, list, uh, a listen to the, the chairman or, and the managing director of uh, uh, Anderson Tax, what their views are. The two of them uh, spoke in Lagos on Wednesday. Take a listen to them. Usually, the tax objective is the minimization of their tax liabilities. Okay, now you can see, you know, from that particular definition, you know, that there's a conflict already. There's a conflict, you know, between the multinational companies, you know, and the host companies, you know, in which you know they they are operating, because the um, the because the multinational companies, you know, are focused on tax minimization. Okay, the host companies, of course, the host countries, of course, you know, want as much tax revenue as they can get, you know, in order to be able to achieve uh, stated, you know, developmental objectives. Okay, so that balance, that tension, you know, has to be addressed. It's even much more relevant um, in sub-Saharan Africa. You know, in fact, you know, generically in developing countries, because in developing countries, um, the the ratio of tax revenue to GDP is usually very low, and they are the ones, you know, that have a lot of <clears throat> objectives, development objectives, you know, that needed that needs to be funded um, with revenue, especially tax revenue. So, because of this conflict, you know, what um, those countries have decided to do is to say, look, listen, how are we going to get our own share, you know, 
of these tax revenues, you know, that multinationals, you know, are generating. Okay, because of that, you know, they then put together a tax compliance, you know, tax tra tax uh, a transfer compliance policy, to, you know, basically to say, look, you know, you comply with this transfer, you know, pricing um, regulations, and if you do, then we are friends. If you don't, you know, then we're going to have a problem. You know, we're going to come, come over, we're going to audit you, and we're going to decide, you know, I mean, what you're going to pay us. So, you know, um, most multinational companies, you know, of course, you know, are very good corporate uh, companies, you know, so it's in their interest, you know, to, to comply. What they would then normally do is to go to, over to the host countries and say, look, listen, this is our economic model for determining those prices. This is what we were thinking about. Okay, the host countries, you know, will take a look, you know, at these models and say, yeah, well, it makes sense, you know, it accords, you know, with what we're thinking about, you know, let's move ahead, you know, and do it. Okay, of course, you know, for the host countries, you know, um, what has to change, you know, is the fact, you know, that it's a it's a very dynamic environment. Okay, since it's a very dynamic environment, you know, you're looking all the time, you know, at tweaking, twisting, you know, I mean, some of your policies, you know, have to make sure that they are relevant, you know, for a particular economic environment. What we've done um, is that, you know, we've taken a look at six countries, Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, South Africa, Tanzania, and Uganda. And we said to ourselves, you know, look, listen, um, let's, let's find out what your transfer pricing environment, you know, looks like in terms of, you know, compliance requirements, in terms of the key developments, you know, that we have, you know, and also in terms of the experiences, you know, of multinational companies, you know, um, that you have in, this, in, um, in these countries. When, we've done, when we do, did that, you know, we then decided, you know, that what we're going to do is to document it in this, you know, what I call, you know, seminar, um, seminar booklet, you know, seminar, you know. You know um, our aim basically is to help both parties to help the multinationals who are coming into particular situations, you know, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa, to understand, you know, the transfer pricing environment so that they can comply better. At the same time, we also want to help the host country to better understand the models, you know, that the multinational companies, you know, are bringing to tell me what you know, what the pricing, what their pricing policy is, you know, and why it's relevant, you know, for them to do that. So our own opinion basically is that look, if you make everything transparent, and if you make everybody accountable, what would happen is that you know we'll all have a win-win situation. Okay, um, so that's why we've done this. One thing that I also want to say basically is that you know, with regard to my first statement, it's very dynamic. Um, this is. In a sense, you know, the transfer pricing environment in, in, in Africa is live, okay? Um, because like I said, there's a lot of demand, you know, for tax revenues, and because of this need for tax revenues, you know, the governments, you know, in most, you know, sub-Saharan um, African countries, you know, will continuously be tweaking um, in order to be able to get, you know, I mean, the amount, the tax revenue that they need, you know, I mean, for, uh, for developmental objectives. So as we go along, what is going to happen is that we're going to add more countries to this. Um, this is our first edition. We're going to add more countries, you know, and as we go along, um, we'll also be adding developments, key developments, you know, that arises from the countries, you know, in which, you know, we, um, we decide to cover so that um, it's beneficial, like I said, you know, for both the multinationals who are making investments, you know, and also the host countries. I think it's important that uh, we re-emphasize the key objectives of this particular project. Um, first and foremost, as Shea, you mentioned, you know, the key objective is to try to help multinational enterprises that are interested in coming to invest in the sub-Saharan African region. Uh, we know that this is a destination that a lot of foreign direct investors would like to come into. The only source of worry is some of the uncertainties that pertain within that sub-region. And one of such uncertainties has to do with taxation. And because transfer pricing is an international tax issue, all right, you know, it pertains across the board, across the whole sub-region. So what we're trying to do is to do an in-depth review and research and be able to present to multinational enterprises and other foreign direct investors as to what are the requirements when it comes to transfer pricing regulations across the sub-region, what are some of the compliance issues 
and what are some of the challenges, be it audits, you know, that pertains within the sub-region. With that information, they'll be well equipped, you know, in factoring that when they are making planning decisions in, in order to enter this market. So if you look at it from that perspective, the object, one of the objectives of this particular project is to help multinational enterprises to make informed decisions when they decide to make investment in the sub-Saharan African sub-region. The same token, when you look at it from the perspective of the government of the same sub-region, this is very helpful to them. You know, most um, sub-Saharan African countries want foreign direct investment and as a means of creating job, um, job opportunities for their citizenry. And to do that, you want foreign direct investors to be comfortable and confident that when they do come in, they will not going to face significant obstacles. So in the area of transfer pricing in, in, in particular, and the area of taxation, we want to be able to help governments, you know, to ensure that there's clear ease of doing business and there's clarity in terms of the challenges that foreign direct investors will face. Now, in terms of coverage, as the title rightly says, review of transfer pricing development in Africa. But in terms of Africa, we looked at it from sub saharan Africa point of view. Because the way um, the, um, the globe is, you know, um, demarcated from a business point of view, and North Africa tends to be part of Middle East. You understand me? So the focus was more on sub saharan Africa. Um, now, we couldn't have detailed information ab um, about every country per se in terms of this review. So in terms of case studies, we had six countries, and she has already mentioned them. We had two from West Africa, which is Ghana and Nigeria. We had three from East Africa, which is Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. And we had one from Southern Africa, which is South Africa. The reason why we selected these six countries is because they have advanced level of implementation of their transfer pricing regimes. So they were more, we had more information as to how they've conducted their transfer pricing regulations over time. Now let's look at some of the key observations that we found based on this study. The first has to do with how many countries have actually implemented transfer pricing regulations, and these are key issues. What we realize is that um, in the past decade, all right, there's been more and more countries in Sub-Saharan Africa that have actually come up with TP regulations and actually implemented that. Prior to the past decade, um, the two countries that stood out in terms of TP regulations were South Africa, which had TP regulations as far back as 1995, and Kenya, which had TP regulations implemented as far back as 2006. Since then, in the past 10 years, more and more countries have implemented TP regulations. And that has been, um, that was what we observed. Now, if you look at the sub-Saharan African countries, about 50% of them already have effective TP regulations, which means they have an effective TP regime. Others do not have TP regulations, but they might have what we call a general anti abundance act in their act. What it means is that they still believe that you cannot use transfer pricing as a means of shifting profit out of that jurisdiction and therefore a company pays less taxes. However, they've not given any regulation or guidance as to how you can comply. So you might have it in your law, but you're not giving me any um, guidance as to how to go about complying. So you don't have an effective TP regime in that sense. So as much as almost all South Southern African countries have it in their act, in the form of General anti avoidance Act, 50% have regulations that give you guidance as to how you comply. And usually when you have those regulations, in order to give that regulation teeth or have the ability to enforce, a sizable number of them have penalties attached to it, all right? In other words, they might either make reference to the act or have transfer pricing specific penalties, which means that if you don't comply, there are going to be penalties that will be slapped on the taxpayer to ensure that you actually do comply. Uh, in Nigeria's case, uh, we had our TP regulation um, published as far back as 2012. But it was a revised version in 2018, that, which was just last year, that had TP-specific penalties, now giving it much teeth. So today you see a lot of taxpayers getting um, letters from FRS for non-compliance, you know, and penalties being slapped. So TP has become one of the highest risk areas of taxation in Nigeria and some of these countries. So that has to do with, you know, um, the level of um, reach in terms of TP regulations. Um, we've also talked about penalties. The other thing that we recognized was that a lot of these regulations has what we call compliance requirements. You need to file transfer pricing returns, just like you file your income tax returns, either for a company or as an individual. So a number of these companies and countries where they do have TP regulations have these filing requirements. You also need to prepare a document that demonstrates that all your later party transactions were conducted in a fair manner. That burden of proof for most of these countries falls on the taxpayer. So you need to actually put together all these documents and say, look, all my 
and transactions with related parties were fair, so we didn't shift profit from one jurisdiction to the other. So we've captured all that in this particular book. The final thing that uh, we looked at, and this we had to limit it to a few countries where we could gather information, both from you know our um, home offices in those countries as well as from the uh, public, had to do with the level of audits, you know. Because um, revenue authorities, once they, um, they have a sense that a company has not complied, will come and audit you. And when they audit you and they find that you've not complied, they will assess additional tax liabilities. What we found out was that for all the six countries that we looked at, Ghana, Nigeria, Uganda, Tanzania, Kenya, South Africa, there's a lot of TP audits going on. You know, and they've led to assessments of additional tax liabilities, which is of concern to taxpayers, which means that taxpayers and multinational enterprises should be very compliant if they want to reduce the incidence of um, assessment of additional tax liabilities. Um, so those are some of the things we observed. Now, there's a lot of things going on in the international space. One of such is being driven by OECD, and that is called the Base Erosion Profit Shifting Scheme. And um, this particular initiative, some countries have started implementing, not all of them. What we found was uh, both Nigeria and South Africa have implemented aspects of this BEPS project, which is being driven globally. So these two countries are kind of ahead of the curve. One of such is what we call the country by country reporting that these two countries have implemented. Ghana has is yet to implement it. Uh, we didn't see the same for any of the Eastern African countries. You know. So those are some of the broad observations that we've made in this particular um, uh, publication. And I think that these are very informative um, stuff that um, multinational enterprises should be cognizant of. And especially um, FDIs who want to come into this um, sub-region need such information so that when they are coming in, they take it into consideration in terms of their plans, how do we comply? And as long as there's clarity in terms of these regulations, and uh, they know that, look, uh, our tax administrators are fair, I believe that there's going to be more inflow of foreign direct investment because we happen to be the last um, jurisdiction or region that you know, foreign direct investors need to take advantage of because all the others they've already taken advantage of. Now, she has talked about future publications. We believe that this is a made in one. Um, as the firm, Anderson Tax Global, all right, keeps expanding. Right now, we have about eight, we are in eight countries in Sub Saharan Africa um, as of today. Africa, Sub Saharan Africa. Sub Saharan, yes, we are eight. Eight, all right. Sub Saharan Africa, we are eight as of the time we're doing this publication. We believe sooner or later we're going to expand. So if we decide, obviously subject to the approval of my chairman, <laughs> <laughs> that we're going to do it every two years at least, then it, when, by the time we come up with the next, we would have been in a lot of jurisdictions. And you can be, um, believe that um, it's going to be more informative. You know, in Nigeria, if we even went ahead to conduct a survey where we asked taxpayers of their experience in the Nigerian TP regime, and that is very informative. That is primary data going back um, to the people and asking them what is your experience when it comes to transfer pricing audits. And we had very good feedback. Some of the experiences that transfer pricing is a high risk area in Nigeria. Um, we couldn't do that for some of the other jurisdictions because we couldn't get that response rate. But we believe that we can do that in, the ne in our next publication, be it next year or next two years. Okay, that's uh, getting a bit of understanding of what the uh, new transfer pricing tax regime is all about. Uh, a lot of more conversations around that uh, sometime uh, a bit later. But let's uh, return to the markets after the break. In two minutes, we'll check in with today's trading day.